All right, guys, um, after I was done the last video, I realized I didn't talk about the blues. So the two blues that were on Crow's palette, Cobalt Blue and Prussian Blue. That's a student grade Cobalt Blue that doesn't really look anything like real Cobalt Blue. Cobalt Blue is much more vibrant than that. Corot used cobalt blue for his skies, okay, um, and so you can make a beautiful sky, obviously, with cobalt blue, but I don't use it enough painting the Irish skies um, to justify the expense of it, because it's one of the most expensive colors, so that's just something to show you. He had his blues living kind of underneath his reds. Okay, mine are a little bit pushed over compared to where his were. Um, but then the other one he has is Prussian blue. That's his dark blue. And I also don't use that just because it's very staining. It's very powerful in mixes. It's not a color I get on with. Um, it gets into everything. But a lot of the painters in past used it. It's still available. Carlson the guy who wrote Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting mentions it in his book and so you know I'm sure there is something to it for landscape painting but anyway I use ultramarine as my dark blue and so basically we've covered all the colors now now so just talking a little bit more about laying out the colors and like I was talking about how Caro has the white up here it's above his thumb on his palette the thing that varies the most with painters is where they'll put their white on their palette some want it over in this corner over here you know um, but I like where it is there um, in that blank space there it's been working well for me and then I have all this down here on the new wave palette for mixing and then I have spaces in here that was the blue sky that I mixed and some of these piles are a little bit wider than I would usually make my piles just because I was um, painting with it and I wanted to be able to show you the colors and not just have little blobs that you couldn't see what they were. And so with the palettes, now when I was in art school, they didn't even teach you about handheld palettes. We were all shown to use um, tabletop palettes that were made out of glass and they did provide a good surface and I still do use a tabletop palette to a certain extent but not a glass one um, I didn't like glass I felt like it was just very cold and was, even though it was tempered and double glazed I was always afraid about breaking it and um, you know it's very easy to clean but I just never can I prefer wood um, just a nicer material um, but I do still use a tabletop palette I have one down here it's my rectangle palette I use that on the table it has a thumb hole in it though um, and I'm going to get into why a handheld palette is useful for if you're doing any kind of realism um, or any kind of painting really the advantage of a handheld palette is you can, while you're mixing your colors, take your palette and put it right into the same light as your canvas. And then your colors that you're mixing are going to look the same when they go onto your canvas. Whereas when it's down on a tabletop, there's a really good chance that it's a different kind of light. There's a shadow coming over it and you won't be able to see the colors as accurately. And so one of the things that I saw in my research because I was looking for not just how painters laid their palettes out in terms of the order of their colors and the positions but to see how they held their palettes and so like I said usually you start out you're holding your palette like this and then if you were holding a rectangular one you might be holding it like this and these rectangular palettes are similar to what Corot was using and a lot of um, you know impressionists and 
one of the photos I seen was of Cezanne working and he was kind of weird. He was like walking and working, but anyway, he was holding his palette like this and supporting it with the forearm and he had his colors laid out similar to Corot and I saw Mertice has them similar to Corot. So I'm thinking Corot held his palette like this also because they also had the white and then the yellow up here and then the other colors going around and a whole bunch of white everywhere. And the thing I noticed then was that it was basically backwards compared to how I was holding it. And that is what the new wave palette takes its cues from. So you're still, I just got a paint on my hands, um, holding the palette with your forearm. But you also have your fingers coming out here. So they're free to like hold a brush or hold a rag. And so it's a great design. And the thing to notice as well is when you have your colors laid out like this and you're able to pick from your different colors and mix them, you're gonna have a much easier time than if you're constantly going down and grabbing stuff from over here and then coming back because you're already kind of set up here to go into your painting, all right? Um, so I, I really enjoyed this um, new wave palette and I think that's it. I could talk about palettes all day, but I think we covered it there for now. See you later, guys.